Today's lecture is on triplets. So here you actually have a motion, and here you have behavior, and here you have thought. Now some people, funny I should say that, but some people are actually, they get caught in an emotion or a feeling or an affect or a sensation, a movement inside their body, and it prompts them to behave in a certain way, to act in a certain way, to dress in a certain way, to walk in a certain way, to gesture in a certain way, or to live their life in a certain way. And honestly, what's supposed to happen is, is thought, thoughtful, like a, a thoughtful recognition of that process of a, a motive quality, an act, and a collating of the event. And so a balanced, a balanced way of being is to, is to go from emotion, behavior, and thought and sort of create a wonderful like cycle between all of them but what happens is sometimes there are people that are all in their emotion completely in their emotion so much so that they they don't even know how to act they don't they don't even know how to think their way outside of what they're feeling you know um some people actually just are stuck in acting, moving, gesturing, being, and absolutely no thought process, no connection to their emotions. There's some people who are thinkers. They never get outside of their heads, completely caught in thoughts. Um, their thoughts prevent them from, from moving. Their thoughts you know, maybe they, they're constantly in research mode. Maybe they're constantly in their head. Maybe they don't, they, they have social anxiety and they actually don't, you know, they have conversations they think they're having with other people and they're actually all in their head. Maybe they never get out of the house. Maybe they never get out of the book. They're completely in uh, thought and, um, uh, in research mode. And some people are, unable to get outside of their feelings. Everything makes them feel a certain way. Everything um, makes them, I mean, everything's either about like not wanting to feel something or totally feeling it. Like, and, and well, the reason I want to talk about this is, is to think about how d does a bee, does a bee have an intent to have honey? and therefore produces that experience in its wings, that motor, that buzz, and it's off in pursuit of that honey. And it's, it, it's, it's within this, this cycle. Or uh, does, does a bird, does a bird think about flapping its, its wings? Does a bird think of flying before it flies does a bird think, oh man, I can't fly. I know I, I know I can't fly. Last time I tried to fly, I totally couldn't fly. I know I'm gonna botch it up, so I'm not gonna fly. I'm not gonna even try. Sort of like caught in some kind of emotive, you know, um, uh, boomerang. Or is it just like pure action? Is there thought? Does a bird think? What, how is it completely, um, uh, intertwined emotion, thought, and behavior in in the animal in the animal world. Does a snake come up to you and say, "Whoa, that was so harsh the other night. I had to swallow a whole egg. I had to dislocate my jaw to do it. It was so hard." Oh my God, I felt it in my whole body. I don't know how I can do that again. Maybe I could just take a pill and like feed myself that way. No. And does a snake come up to you by text perhaps and say, oh man, 
I had to shed another skin last night. What a drag. Everyone saw me. Oh, man. How many of these things do I have to shed? Well, no. And so what is there to learn? Much from the animal world. Do you know the bonobo chimpanzee doesn't say, where am I going to sleep tonight? He acts. When the sun goes down, he begins to gather branches and leaves, and he says, I'm going to make a bed for the night. Out of... Out of whatever I find, I'm going to make myself this awesome hammock suspended between two trees. And that, my friends, is where I'm going to sleep tonight. Caught between my emotion, behavior, and thought, we can all learn from the chimpanzees. We can all learn from the snake shedding skin, from the bird flying. The bird doesn't think, I don't think I have it, what it takes to fly. I'm like really worried. I get this way every time I'm, I'm going to fly and then I know I just can't do it. A bird doesn't think that. How How is the artist any different in terms of expressivity? In, in, ex in the artist expressing or the, the poet or the writer or the thinker, the beer, the doer, whatever, the creative type, which we all are, doesn't think I'm going to express myself now. I've heard people say, I just like to, I just like to do things with my hands, uh, whatever. Maybe it's not art, whatever. I just like to make things. I don't want to think about it. It's like, well, actually, if we're caught, if the artist wants to look at the triplets, then the artist has to think about what they make. They have to think about the feelings in which that work was produced from. Plus, they have to think about what, what, they're, what they're feeling while they're in the process of making. Okay, so Mondrian, apparently, he, he set up his studio like a laboratory. He wore a lab coat. Well, I don't know if he wore a lab coat. They say he wore a lab coat. He was pretty cool. He would journal before he started a painting with all that anxiety about what to make, whatever. He would, he would journal, he would channel it, he would funnel it. Then he'd journal while he was painting. And all the struggles that an artist has, it's just like, oh, I have to keep pushing the paint around, what am I doing? Or, or getting so excited to like, where the, paint, the direction of the painting is going. Then he'd journal afterwards. Okay, so this is the same thing that Jung did. When Jung broke from Freud, he actually, he went to the river and he said, well, actually I think it was a lake, but, but anyway, he went to a lake in Switzerland and he interviewed himself. Okay, so this could be like a total psychological break, really like Jung was depressed, but actually there is an opportunity in that kind of pilgrimage of self. He interviewed himself. He journaled for 16 years. He worked on the Red Book. So he interviewed himself. What do you mean he interviewed himself? Do you think he made videos? Like, no. But he interviewed his selves. He, he reached into what he considered his archetypes. He worked, he worked with the collective, collective selves. He sort of probably found something about himself he didn't like and would go there with intention and meaning. He wasn't stuck just thinking. No. Jung wasn't stuck thinking. He was emoting. And he was behaving, journaling and writing, interviewing himself. There is much to be learned. This is just the beginning.